at no time during the storm did I ever feel like we were at risk. Mm -hmm. I mean, it felt sturdy the entire time. The category four hurricane just blew through here. And our recovery, literally, we were up and running the next day. An example of how we should build future communities. Don't forget to subscribe. Hurricane Ian collided with Southwest Florida. This monster hitting the coastline with sustained winds of 150 miles an hour. The powerful Category 4 storm would kill more than 100 Floridians. The aftermath, unbelievable, leaving nearly 3 million people without power in a wake of tens of billions of dollars in damage. While no two places down here are alike, one town, surrounded by destruction, seems to have fared better in the storm than anywhere else. Hey, I'm Vic. I'm Daryl. Nice, nice, nice to meet you. We met the Treese family at their home in so, Babcock uh, Ranch. It's a community about 20 miles northeast of Fort Myers. Ian came right through here. I mean, you could hear the wind. You could definitely hear when things were hitting the house. Um, but I will say that at no time during the storm did I ever feel like we were at risk. Mm -hmm. I mean, it felt sturdy the entire time. And did you have power? We did have power. AC? We had AC. Um, <laughs> he was working. With six people under this roof and Winston the dog, school administrator Shannon Treese says they watched live weather forecasts, cooked dinner, even worked remote as neighboring communities were torn apart. Meanwhile, the Treeses only lost a few shingles and screens on their patio. All around you, people have a very different scenario. Yes, they do. It was heartbreaking. I'm not going to lie. It was hard. Um, I'm going to get a little emotional probably because my, a lot of my staff, a lot of our staff at Babcock um, live outside of here to see the devastation outside and start getting the phone calls from them that, you know, my house is flooded, my house is gone. You know, I went to my house and I just walked away from it. Um, my house had four foot of water. Um, all of those um, started happening really quickly after the storm. So we started really understanding at that point how fortunate we were um, to be here. And we, did, we have not taken that for granted. We have been all over Southwest Florida reporting on the damage, looking at the hardest hit areas, which surround us. But here in Babcock Ranch, it looks like nothing ever happened. For full transparency, it's October the 11th. It's been less than two weeks since Hurricane Ian came through as a Category 4. And everything looks picture perfect. Doing this well in that big of a storm was no accident. It was part of Sid Kitson's decades-long plan. When I look at the... Uh what happened over the last couple weeks, my heart breaks, just breaks for so many people, you know, uh, uh, here in Southwest Florida. The destruction, the misery that you see is just unimaginable. We have, we have ho uh, our own employees who have lost their homes and lost so many of their belongings. At the same time, you know, we, we at Babcock Ranch hopefully can give people hope. And the hope is that it can be done right. And the, all the people, the planners, the engineers, all the people that came together to make this possible at Babcock Ranch should be proud. Kitson is a former NFL player who later became an eco-conscious developer, purchasing nearly 100,000 acres in Charlotte County. Most of that is now a nature preserve, but on 18,000 acres, he designed what he calls the country's first solar-powered, storm-resistant town. So you have a property that is eco-friendly. It's now storm tested. How do you keep it affordable when the price of building is just skyrocketing? And, and I think there are a couple ways to look at that. Uh, if you look at Babcock Ranch today, a category four hurricane just blew through here. And our recovery, literally, we were up and running the next day. And most of what we were doing is maybe replacing a few house shingles here and there, some signage. Obviously, to power an entire town, you're going to need more than just a couple solar panels on roofs. You're going to need this. 
a solar farm. Yes, this is a couple miles from the center of Babcock Ranch. It's 900 acres of land with nearly 700,000 solar panels. He teamed up with utility company Florida Power and Light, harnessing the sun to generate 150 megawatts. It's a test site of sorts. Battery backups for cloudy days still attached to the grid. But FPL says it was the underground infrastructure that kept everything working during the hurricane. In this town, you'll find no power lines. Those are often the first to go during a storm. Do you want this to be the national model? Yes, but you know, it's interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm very optimistic about what we can do in this country. They released the plans in 2005, started construction on Earth Day in 2016. Babcock's team of scientists, engineers, and builders had a tough task when they designed the town, making a community less vulnerable to major storms. So Kitson chose land that was 30 feet above sea level, invested in stormwater drains everywhere, and built ponds to catch the water. The trees and shrubs here native to Florida, so the ecosystem is naturally fitted for the weather. Every structure is built above code. I do believe that there are going to be others out there that uh, are going to look at Babcock Ranch and say, we can do it better. And I'm okay with that. You're good with that. I'm absolutely good with that. This neighborhood of 5,000 is on pace to reach 50,000 within the next few years. Homes here are selling between $200,000 and into the millions, as Kitson adds townhomes, apartments, and rentals to make it more attainable. All things considered, you did incredibly well. We did incredibly well. Back at the Trees house, things are normal. School is in session, homework is still due, but the family is now spending their free time volunteering in surrounding areas where people weren't so fortunate. Is this the national example? I think it's a pretty incredible example. An example of how we should build future communities for a better relationship with Mother Earth. Be sure to subscribe to Solutionaries to see all our latest videos right here on YouTube.